All right, let's dive in. So, remember just a year ago, everyone, and I mean everyone, on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, the whole internet was basically writing Google's AI obituary, right? Too slow, lost the plot, bureaucrats killed innovation, the narrative was brutal. And the craziest part, this is the company that literally invented the transformer architecture, the core tech powering almost everything we can call AI today. So, how does that even happen? So, turns out, those obituaries were way premature. Google has been quietly, but very aggressively, hitting Control z on the whole failure story. And they're staging a huge AI comeback. A new race has emerged in generative AI. You are a fan of something called deep research from the Google Gemini team. Yeah. And Google's distribution advantage, that is king. You know, Google did unveil a new version of its, its uh, flagship AI model. I'm just curious what- It is extremely strong in reasoning. It's an amazing coding model. So here's exactly what we're gonna break down in this video, the big why. Why did Google, the OG Transformer creators, seem to stumble out of the gate in the first place? We'll get into it. The comeback. How exactly is Google using its massive existing user base and products to turbocharge its AI push? That distribution advantage is key. Your AI playground. We're deep diving into Google AI Studio. Forget the heavy enterprise stuff for now. This is the tool for builders, hackers, students, anyone who wants to experiment and get hands-on with AI fast. Sounds good, right? So let's go. So let's talk about the why. So the big question, the elephant in the room. Google literally invented the Transformer architecture back in 2017 with the paper, attention is all you need. That's the engine driving basically all this AI craziness we see today, like ChatGPT, Claude, everything. So how on earth did they seem to drop the ball so hard with Bard right at the start? And why did it feel like they were losing the race when they technically started it? It really boils down to a few key things and that context nails it. So first, that infamous launch demo. Ouch! Remember that? So Bard confidently spat out some wrong info in its own ad. Something about the James Webb telescope being the first to image an exoplanet. Nope, wrong. Experts, astronomers and literally everyone jumped all over it instantly. This took a massive hit on their credibility. Alphabet, the parent company of Google, around $100 billion. And the investors got panicked and looked over their shoulders at ChatGPT exploding and Microsoft integrating AI into Bing. Also, there was a feeling that the whole Bard launch was a bit rushed, to be honest. And Bard's initial performance was an issue. It struggled with basic questions and confidently made up stuff on the full screen. Even Google themselves put up a disclaimer saying, hey, this is experimental, it might give inaccurate responses, which isn't a good sign at all. But like I said at the start, that narrative is getting deleted. Google didn't just sit back. They went back to the drawing board, leveraged their core strengths and especially their insane distribution advantage. So how exactly are they turning the ship around? That's where the real comeback story begins. So let's get into that. The comeback. Google has insane distribution. Think about it. While other AI companies are hustling, spending millions trying to get users, Google already has billions. Where? Everywhere. Search, Android, Chrome, Maps, and crucially, workspace. Google's strategy is not building a whole new audience from scratch. They just started embedding Gemini right inside the products that people already use. That helped me write in docs, smart summaries in Gmail, building a sheet from a single prompt. That's not just a feature. That's Google flexing its distribution muscle. They're upgrading their existing billions of users and you simply cannot buy that kind of reach overnight. It's a built-in, unbeatable advantage. First, the models got seriously good and really, really fast. We're talking about Gemini 2.5 Pro, Gemini Flash, models that aren't just catching up, but are crushing the benchmarks. They're matching or even beating their competition in critical tests. The narrative about Google is behind. Yeah, the performance numbers started telling a very different story. And the kicker, they made it accessible, especially for builders like us. Google AI Studio, it has an insanely generous free tier. They basically say, come play, come build, see how good our stuff is. That's extremely smart. So you combine that unstoppable distribution with top tier, often free models that are crushing benchmarks, that's not just just catching up folks, that's Google using its unique strengths to completely reshape the AI landscape. Now enough about talking about their strategy, let's actually see what it looks like in action. So without further ado, let's jump into Google AI Studio and see how you can leverage all of this. Now the first thing we're going to do is go to aistudio.google.com and which is insane. Zero things to install straight into the web IDE, which is super clean. So as soon as you come to this page, you've got four main options. You've got chat, you've got stream, which is honestly kind of mind blowing. We'll get to that in a little bit. Then we've got video generation. Yeah, 
You heard that right. And we've also got these starter apps. So each one's a different flavor of AI power. Now we'll dive into that in a little bit. So let's kick things off with chat. So in this, you're usually rocking Gemini 2.5 Pro as the default. So this is the powerhouse, the deep thinker model. Now watch this, all right? So when you ask it something complex, you sometimes see this little thinking visual. It shows you what it's processing before it spits out the answer. Very similar to Deep Sea. Now, honestly, is that essential? Maybe not. But is it useful for getting better prompts? Absolutely. When you see how the AI is breaking down your question, you learn how to ask better questions the next time. And trust me, in this AI world, good prompting is basically your superpower. And over here, Google's not just throwing one model at you. You've got the whole Gemini family here. You got 2.5, you got 2.0, you got 1.5, plus those open source Gemma models as well. And even the preview stuff. So each one's tuned differently. Some are lightning fast like Flash and are great for quick tasks. Others like Pro are more thoughtful and detailed. And some excel at creativity too. So you pick the right tool for the job. All right. Enough chat, let's jump into something really fun. Image generation. So for this kind of quick stuff, Gemini 2.0 Flash is your go-to. So let's try something classic. How about generating an image of Batman versus Iron Man? <laughs> classic DC versus Marvel. Simple enough, right? So let's see. This should just take a couple of seconds. <laughs> this is, we've already got an image ready, which is a pretty decent start. But here's where it gets really cool. Gemini isn't just about making images. It's awesome at editing them too. So let's tweak this a little bit. Okay, Gemini, uh, make this image landscape, 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Awesome, so you see how it adjusted? Now hang on, before we blast off to the next section, let's talk about something most people just glance over, but it's super important if you really want to control Gemini in AI Studio. And I'm talking about the run settings over here on the right. So first up, the model. We already played with this. So choosing between Pro, Flash, Gemma, etc. Simple enough, right? Now below that, you have a token count. Basically tells you how much brain power, input and output text combined the model is using. Keeping you aware of your limits, especially on the free tier. Now this I find is an extreme benefit because if you're using free tiers on Bolt, Replay, ChatGPT, you often run out of tokens without even realizing when you finish them. But over here, giving you this count really gives you a head start in learning how to structure your prompts properly. Next, temperature. So you hear tech folks talk about creativity and randomness, right? So this is the norm. Lower temperature, you get focused, predictable, straight to the point answers. Think finance chatbots, legal summaries, stuff that you need to be precise, you can crank it a little bit higher. And once you crank it higher, you get more creative, unexpected, sometimes wild results. Perfect for writing stories, brainstorming, visual ideas, that kind of thing. You dial it in based on your need. All right, next up is stream. So if you run a business, if you're learning stuff online, or if you just spend any time researching, Stream is basically a cheat code, seriously. And here's why. So with Stream, you're not just typing prompts anymore. You're talking to Gemini back and forth like real conversation. But the real magic, you can show Gemini what you're looking at. You can screen share your work, turn on your webcam. It literally sees what you see and helps you in context. So imagine you're stuck in Figma. You're trying to flatten an image, combine layers, whatever, and it's just not working. Normally, you'd bounce over to YouTube, watch five different tutorials or type some super long specific query into Google hoping for the best. But with Stream, just share your screen and say, hey Gemini, how the heck do I flatten this specific image in Figma? To flatten an image in Figma, you would typically select the image and any other layers you want to include in the flattened result, then right click and choose flatten from the context menu. This will combine the selected layers into a single vector layer. And boom, instant answer right there with clear steps and you can actually follow while looking at your own screen. And this is an absolute game changer for productivity and for learning. So now let's talk videos. This one is genuinely wild. Google's AI Studio lets you generate videos right here in the browser. No fancy software needed initially. Look, it's not going to spit out the next Marvel trailer, okay? So manage your expectations a little bit. But for quick stuff, B-rolls for your social media, short explainer visuals, filler shots for a presentation, it's absolutely perfect. So let's say something simple. Let's just ask it to generate a man eating a mango. There it is. And honestly, it doesn't look that fake, right? We also mess around trying to animate some random images that we found online. You know, grabbing stuff from Pinterest, old memes, telling Gemini to make it move. Okay, so let's just try one now. I'm gonna find an image on Google. All right, drop it in and animate. Uh, okay, okay, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it's a hit or a miss. Uh, this time it wasn't quite working, but other times it works like magic. So let's not sweat it. We'll use one of the suggested templates. I think the steak one looks good. Okay, click, generate. Yeah, that one. See, now this one works like a charm. So 
here's the deal. For creators, video editors, marketers, even just someone trying to make a cool looking personal video, this is a huge time saver. It might not replace your full editing suite yet, but need a quick scene, a specific B-roll shot that you can't find? This thing can save you hours. And finally, we're getting to the boss level, starter apps. All right, so the last stop on our AI studio tour. And honestly, this is where things get super, super interesting for anyone who wants to build anything. Now, don't think that these are just basic chatbots or simple GPT wrappers. These are actually mini applications built right into the AI Studio IDE. So we're talking things like GIF Maker, a flashcard maker, and one that really caught my eye, which is the spatial understanding. So let's check this out. So you start by uploading an image, literally anything. Let's use that same image that we grabbed off of Google earlier. Okay. Then let's look at these options. Man, check these out. Do you want 2D bounding boxes, objects around, segmentation masks to isolate them, pinpoint specific points, or even try 3D labeling? Okay, so let's hit 2D boxes and boom, instantly identifies and boxes the laptop, the pen holder, the person, everything. Insane, man. Yeah, so we're also gonna give 3D a shot. Okay. Okay, to be, to be fair, maybe it's not perfect yet, but it still looks like a work in progress. It's better than anything ChatGPT could have done. But seriously, for a web-based AI playground, this is way more advanced than you might expect it to be. The AI interviewer. So we're gonna whip up a quick mini app that helps you train for interviews using your webcam and AI studio. Nothing super fancy, just simple, practical, and genuinely useful. And the perfect tool for this, Stream, of course. So here's the plan. So first we need to find a solid system prompt. And if you don't know, the system prompt is basically the instruction manual that you give to the AI telling it how to act. So let's ask Gemini 2.4 Pro to help us refine one. Okay, I think that's a pretty detailed prompt. So let's see what Pro gives us now. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Look at that polished prompt, bro. Let's copy this. So now we've copied it, we're gonna drop it straight into stream system prompt box right here. And just like that, we're live. We have our own personal AI interviewer ready to go. So now you can turn on your webcam, upload and paste your resume, tell it your goals, okay? So make sure you do that. And you just start talking and answering its questions like it's a real interview. And Gemini, it's watching you through the webcam, listening to your voice and processing your resume context. Asking follow-up questions and the feedback, this is the key part. It's not just generic stuff like good job or sound more confident. No, we're talking about feedback on your tone, your pauses, any hesitation, the clarity and structure of your answers and your perceived confidence. Actionable feedback, the kind that actually helps you get better. You spoke generally about recruiting presenters. What specific technical aspects were challenging? Were you dealing with data integration, user interface issues, or something else? And the best part, the entire AI interview coach, we literally built it with one well-crafted system prompt in under one minute, which just proves the point. Whatever problem that you're trying to solve, whether it's big or small, if you can sit down, think about it clearly, and define it well in a prompt, you can probably get Gemini to help you tackle it. That's the real magic here. That's it from us for this breakdown. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into Google AI Studio and the comeback strategy, you know the drill. Until next time, keep building, keep experimenting, and we'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.